Oh no! Not the camera, not the camera. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Hello and welcome to Strategy, Skills and Drills with Coach David. Today I'm gonna to show you how to hit a hard serve. So the point on hitting a hard serve is not necessarily to get an ace, because that is super rare in pickleball. And if you're getting aces, that means you're probably hitting the net the other five times. You know, so what's, what's the difference? You can't hit the net. You gotta hit a hard enough serve to get it over the net in play and never hit the net. Respect the net. Never hit the net, no nets. Okay, so how to hit a hard serve. Normally I would hit a lob serve because that's my favorite. And there's other videos that where I show why I hit a lob serve and I'll do more in the future. But for now, and I'm mixing it up with a hard serve. If I get a wind at my back and I can hit a hard serve, it is very difficult for somebody to return it deep. I want to make them make a mistake. That's how this game's played. I want to play off of their unforced errors. I want to win my game off of allowing them to make mistakes. I'm not gonna really force winners in this game, it's difficult, but I can allow them to hit losers. So I'm gonna keep it in play, keep it in play, keep it in play, and let them hit losers. Okay, let's just hit a few here. So start conservative, Go, start going slow, nice windmill, I keep the ball low, and then I just kind of lick it. I let it top spin, and a lot of my angle is here with my paddle. If I go here, it's going to fly up out of the stadium. If I go too much, it's never going to get over the net. So this is practice. You have to practice this shot. Another thing I'm doing is I'm starting on the very extreme edge of the court. Now you can't hit the ball with a foot outside. If you extend this line, make an imaginary line, you cannot serve the ball with your foot outside of that line. But the reason I start over here is it gives me the most room. Right, this is how they measure phone screens, you know? That's how they get the diagonal inches, a uh, 7.4 inch phone screen. So it's the longest distance of the court from this corner to that corner, or that corner, or that corner. So that's, I need the most room to make a mistake. Allow yourself room to make mistakes. So these are moving pretty quickly. and they're getting pretty deep. So that's what you want, a deep serve that's fast. Deep serve that's fast and has a lot of top spin, or, and then later on you can add side spin and over the top spin, all sorts of different stuff. Okay, so all these are in, and then in the beginning, I'm not worried about hitting somebody's backhand. I want to use the whole, pretty much the whole diagonal area of the court. Okay, I don't know if those look hard on camera, but the people I uh, play against say they're hard, so we'll see. I mean, I can't really hit them any harder and keep them in play. So I'm winding up. I'm doing my footwork. I step one, two, strike. The ball has to be down here, not here. If it starts inching up, I start missing. If it goes too low, I miss in the net. And I also finish high. I'm not finishing straight. 
I'm finishing up above my shoulder. And those are hit basically as hard as I can hit it. Yeah, I can't really hit it much harder than that. And those all went in. I think I might have barely missed one, but I can't tell from here. But that's my one, two, three, four spots. And I'm trying to hit basically, if I can, in between the one and two cones. I want it, I want the most area I can to make mistakes. All right, I'm not worried if it's to their forehand right now. Later on, once I, uh, I mean, I've hit, thousands of balls to get this serve and then because in the beginning I would miss a lot hit the net a lot but you have to keep practicing this isn't something you really go out and just start hitting hard serves without practice this takes a lot of practice and you got to practice when the wind in your face you got to practice with the wind at your back so this is a totally different monster with the wind at my back wind in my back I take a little bit more off and try to land it more in the center and let the wind push it back, but it is super hard to return if I got the wind at my back. That one out. That's good. That's good. Okay, that one out. So now I'm testing my boundaries, so now I gotta dial it back in a little bit. testing the boundaries okay and then I figured out what I was doing wrong was my ball position here started to get high so once that starts getting high they look a roadrunner right there roadrunner coming to play pickleball see beep 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 maybe it wants to eat some Pickleball eggs. Isn't that beautiful though? That's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, man. Okay, so now I'm dialed back in. So what I did, I was missing my ball starting position, started to inch up. So every time that would inch just a little bit, it would go further, deeper and deeper and deeper. So I, I know I have to move this ball back down. And you can't hit it out of your hand, you gotta let it drop, which I am doing. I'm also standing back. One, two, three, four. Probably four or five feet. And then I take a, one, a little step with my left foot while I'm winding, step with my right, and I hit the ball. Oh, that would be tough to get. And that's getting a little side spin too. Oh, it hit the white line, it looked like. You hear that? That's the Roadrunner. It's, it's not doing beep beep, it was doing a clicking, a clicking sound at me. That is awesome. Man, Mother Nature, gotta love it. Mother Nature and pickleball and family, doesn't get much better. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of side spin on it. And how I'm doing that is instead of hitting the ball kind of totally underneath, is I'm bringing the paddle up side, a little more sideways. So I'm getting a little side top spin. Now we can switch it up a little bit. And that's over the top spin. Like a more of a tennis style. I go down under 
and then I go this way, this way. Instead of just this, I go here and this way. I lick it, the ball. It doesn't go as fast, but it's more accurate. I get it in pretty much every time if I do that top spin, tennis style top spin. So now we're gonna do the cut. So this is getting extreme side spin. I'm coming like this and then cutting across it this way, cutting across it this way and get extreme side spin. So it doesn't go as fast. Oh, don't hit the net. Never hit the net. So that's a shot I would use just to mix it in there. But if I can't get that 95%, I'm not gonna bring it out during that day, no way. I'm not gonna be hitting the net and it's messing uh, me and my partner's chance of winning. No way, I gotta respect my partner too, which means don't hit the net. So after I get this dialed in, I'll start going towards this person's backhand. If he's a right-hander, he wants to hit from cone one and two. But if I hit cones three and four, he's gonna have to use his backhand. So that's hard to the backhand. That's a hard shot to return. But now I'm bringing in, uh, risk because this is a much tighter shot lesser distance to go plus i have to be more precise oh yeah hit the line but that is flirting with disaster you don't <laughs> one of the worst things you can do is blow your serve and if they're getting all these back and you're i mean you're really working hard because there's people that get it back it's like nothing uh, abandon, abandon ship, it's not worth the risk. If they aren't making any errors, why, why take the risk? It's not worth it. Go back to a lob serve. Okay, go back to that serve. Or your just regular serve and get it over the net. Okay, don't mess with a hard serve. If they're getting it back or you start glitching so sometimes you don't know what's happening. It, it just starts glitching out. You start hitting the net or you start hitting it deep. Don't go more than two mistakes. You know, especially in a tournament. Rec ball, who cares? Practice hitting rec ball. Tell your partner, hey, I'm working on my hard serve. Uh, be patient with me. If I miss uh, two or three, I'll go back to my regular serve. So do that in rec ball. Tournaments, man, don't miss more than one or even two. If you don't know exactly what's happening, just abandon it and go back to your, your safe serve. So you need a safe serve, a hard serve, and a lob serve uh, to play this game, or just an awesome lob serve in my opinion. So if I do my lob serve, and then I mix it up the next one, it looks like I'm lob and then I go hard. So that should mess them up. Like my uh, when I was a semi-pro pitcher, my fastball and my slider looked like the exact same pitch, but my slider came out 10 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour slower with curve. So you can do that with, that's all I'm doing here. You know, I might have only been playing pickleball for a year and a half, nearly uh, two years now, but I've practiced this my whole life, basically playing baseball. So that should be good. One's lob, one's hard. All right, uh, thanks for watching. This is CoachDavidPickleball.com. Go to CoachDavidPickleball.com. Brings you to my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, it's free. You get to watch free videos. Hit that like button, I appreciate it. That means you appreciate my the time I'm putting in to make these videos. I could just come out and practice, but that wouldn't be any fun. Then I only benefit. But if I show my practice to everybody, then everybody can benefit. So I get to help more people. It's more fun that way. That's what I did with my self-defense channel is I used to have
a gym, of course, and you could help, what, have 30 to 50 kids in that gym or students. And then I figured out, wow, this internet thing's pretty cool. Let's put it on the internet. Now I can do thousands of students, thousands. So that's what I do. All right, and we're doing it for pickleball. Okay, hit that like button. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Give me a comment or something you might want to see in a video. Thank you.